Let's start. We will start today in Supta Baddha which is recline butterfly pose. If you have two blocks, then you can place them either side of the thighs. As we come down onto the back, bring the heels together and the toes apart. So your ankles actually stay neutral. Quite often in this posture, we bring the soles of the feet together and this causes the ankles to collapse. If we have the feet wider, so the feet going out, but just touching at the heels, then this makes the posture more into the hips. Bring in the, some blocks either side of the thighs, if that feels good. And just start to settle here melting into the earth if you like you can place one hand on the belly one hand on the chest otherwise ones can be by the side with the palms facing upwards but allowing the fingers to curl towards the heart if you haven't already i invite you to close the windows of the eyes and turn the arrows of attention inward allow the muscles to relax and surrender into this posture. So the theme of this class is freedom. And I invite you to think of a time in your life when you felt free. This might be the time when you were a child, maybe you were cycling out on your bicycle with your friends, not a care in the world. Maybe it's where you went on holiday somewhere and you visited a beautiful location nature with an inspiring view maybe it's a time when you're floating in the ocean looking up at the blue sky. just think of a time any time in your life when you really felt a sense of being free and when you start to think of this tune into what you can actually see at this time in your life what are the sights that you can see? And then think about what sounds you can hear. What are the sounds you can hear at this time when you're feeling free? And then maybe you can smell something. Maybe there was a familiar scent at that time. We always used to think smell of freshly smelled grass really gave me a sense of freedom. And then think about all of the feelings in your body, the sensation that you're feeling deep internally within the body when you have the sense of freedom of remembering the time. And with that sensation, Start to think about your present life now and are there any areas where you want to bring freedom to it? <clears throat> Maybe in a relationship, a job, financially. Maybe you want to bring some more freedom into your health. You're trapped in some way in your health. And then think about one tiny step you could take that could just bring a bit of more freedom into that area of your life. If you can't think of anything, don't worry, but it's something to think about, about the rest of the day. Take a moment to go here. And then from this position of recline butterfly, Press the knees together using the hands. And then bring the knees into the chest one by one, giving yourself a little squeeze. Place a hand on each knee and widen the knee towards the armpits. Then bring the feet up to the sky. If it's within your body, maybe reach up and grab the outside of the feet. Otherwise, you can always grab the tops of the thighs. Into Ananda Balasana, baby. The entire length of the spine is on the floor. Knees are going towards the armpits. Just breathe here, maybe rock gently side to side. 
this is often a pose that we did as a child or a baby. Probably don't remember it, but it is imprinted in our subconscious. And every single event, task, action, emotion, interaction that we've ever had in our lives leaves an imprint on us. And in yoga, philosophy, it's considered what we call samsaras. These are visible markers and they leave their impression on us and they shape who we become. They shape our behaviors, our character, everything. Sometimes these can be unhelpful. When we start to cultivate a yoga practice, moving with slow mindful movements in time with the breath, we can use this to help overcome these unhelpful samskaras. From here, slowly release the feet. Bring the hands on top of the knees, holding the knees parallel to each other, and then allow the thigh bones to just fall away from the body. So your hands are actually supporting the weight of the legs. This allows the femur bone to descend into the hip socket feeling a little bit of release in the hip flexor. And then from here, we'll slowly roll up ankle top. So you can take a couple of goes to get there. Coming over the feet and onto hands and knees. Bring the hands directly underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. We'll start to move in a hip circle just to feel some freedom in the lower body. Do this quite intuitively, what your body needs. Move circle. Maybe you find some areas of tension or stickiness and you can hover there for a while, move it forwards, and then complete the circle. You can even just start to move the spine from side to side. Responding to what your body needs. Making it a fluid and free movement. And if you are going in a circle, maybe go the other way. It's so good to move without worrying about how it looks then come to settle make sure the knees are directly underneath the hips and the hands are directly underneath the shoulders on an inhale the right arm will lift up to the back and if you exhale thread it underneath the left coming in to thread the needle the right shoulder comes down the right ear comes down you can tent the left fingers or if it feels good maybe stretch the left in front or if it's available in your body you can reach up to a bind behind the back, catching the inside of the right thigh. Breathing deep. Then to come out, we slowly release the left arm up to the sky, place it underneath the left shoulder. The right arm goes back up. We'll swing it forward to the front of the mat. So you're reaching out of the top of the shoulder making sure the right knee is under the right hip and the left leg extends behind for spinal balance. This is where we really engage the front of the spine and the abs. Limbs are long and engaged. And if you exhale, curl in, knee to elbow, extend back out, long, and then release down, side feet. On an inhale, the left arm lifts to the sky. Exhale, left arm comes underneath the right, left ear to the earth. You can keep the right hand on the floor, extend it in front, or if it's in your body, bring it round for the heart mind. Grabbing the inside of the left thigh. Noticing you might be feeling a bit stiff and tense. Mentally sending the breath there. Now, the 
Maybe that in. Right arm goes up to the sky, plant it underneath the right shoulder, left arm lifts back up. It's to the front of the back. Push the right hand down to the right shoulder, left knee up, left hip, and the right leg extends behind, spinal balance, zipping up through the midline, lengthening the limbs, exhale, knee to elbow. Then inhale long. And then exhale back down. Wonderful. We'll do a couple of cat, cow, cat, dogs. On an inhale, drop the belly. Head, chest comes through the roots of the arms. As you exhale, round the spine, come into a Halloween cat, tuck the toes, and then the hips lift up to come back to a downward facing dog. If you don't stay here, on an inhale, the knees descend back down to the earth. And the head and the chest lifts again for a cow. Exhale, round the spine. Go through your cat, your dog. And then inhale, we move back to cow pose. One more of these. Exhale, round in the spine. Tucking the pelvis, coming up to this downward facing dog. And then inhale back down, lowering the knees gently, lifting the head and chest. And then return to a neutral spine. Take a free breath here. We'll move briefly into downward facing dog again, tucking the toes and lifting the hips up to the sky. Upper back is wide, the biceps towards the ears. I'm on to the tiptoes, and we'll tiptoe gently to the front of the mat. Put a slight bend in the knees and drape the belly over the thighs. Really down, maybe shaking the head, left the nose, getting a bit of freedom in this head, in the neck, allowing gravity to give you a little bit of an assist. Place the hands to the hip, engage the front spine. And we come all the way up to standing. Wonderful. I'm just going to check. I'm still transmitting. It looks like I am. We'll move through a variation of sun salutation. <clears throat> Bring the feet parallel, palms to the chest, on an inhale, palms to the to the sky. Your body stretch, tall mountain. As you exhale, bend the knees gently, bring the prayer through the midline and come down to the earth, hands at the earth. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the spine. And exhale, plant the hands, step the right foot back, right knee descends to the earth, and the torso comes up for Anjanea Atana, arms to the sky. Bring the prayer through the third eye, to the heart. Back to the earth, back knee lift, step back, downward facing dog. Rock forward, plank, rolling through the spine, full articulation. Then lower knees, chest, chin. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, seat to heels, downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward. Left knee comes to the earth, Anjaneya Asana, palms to the sky, tall spine. Then through the third eye, through the heart, back to the earth, back knee lifts, step forward, forward fold, inhale all the way up, palms to the sky, and then palms to chest. Again, inhale, palms lift, tall spine, exhale, bend the knees. Bring the prayer through the midline. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Left foot steps back. Left knee descends. Anjaneya Asana. To the third eye. To the heart. To the earth. Back knee lifts. Step back. Downward facing dog. Roll foot forward through the spine. To high plank. Lower knees, chest and chin. In Bhujangasana, baby. Exhale, seat to heels. 
downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot steps forward, right knee descends. Arms come up to the sky. Prayer comes to Arjuna, Anahata, back to the earth, back knee lifts. We step forward, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, tall mountain. Exhale, palms to chest. I invite you to close the eyes here. Connect with the breath. Notice how you feel in the body. Maybe you have a tingling sensation. That's all the prana, that energy flowing around the body. Makes you feel pretty free. And then slowly open the eyes. Wonderful. We now move on to Garudasana, eagle pose. An eagle is a great symbol of freedom. It soars high in the sky and nothing can stop it. You know, living in Costa Rica, seeing all these birds flying about, it does make you feel pretty free. I will mirror you for this, bringing both, bringing the legs together, grounding down into the feet, the knees, grounding down into the right foot, starting to pour all the weight into this leg, zipping up through the midline, activating your mula bandha, your root block, so that's the perineum, which is a stable column inside us of your spine. The left leg lifts and cross it over the right knee. You can bring the toes down to the earth, and this might be your equal base with a little kickstand in your body, and double wrap. The key here is to bend the knees and lock the legs together. Arms come out to the knee. The left arm goes under the right. And you may be here, you may be here, or you can double wrap. Lift the elbows up, level with the shoulders, feeling that wonderful stretch in the back of the neck. And the shoulders, we hold so much tension there. And then if it's available to you, you may start to fold forward, coming into this little eagle ball. If you fall over, don't worry. It is a practice and not a perfect. And then if you're in the fold, slowly come up, we unravel, and we release our eagle and let it be free. Wonderful. Shake it out a little bit. And then we'll move to side B. This time grounding down into the left foot. Starting with these bent knees. We lift the right leg. Lock it over the top. Maybe double wrap. Maybe kickstand. Whatever is good in your body. Hips are neutral. Right arm comes under left. Elbows come up level with the shoulders. Breathing deep. Feeling that wonderful stretch. And then if you like, you can slowly fold forward, coming into this little ball. It really helps us turn inward. We do these yoga poses, we turn it inward like this. It helps us see with a lot more clarity. Removing distraction, tuning in to who we really are. If you're in the little ball, we'll slowly come back up. Unravel, let your eagle fly and release. Well done. We'll move back to the floor. Get the, getting there with my favorite method of transportation, which is Malakana, yogi squat. Bringing the feet quite wide, wide as the mat. Heels are in, toes are turned outwards. Prayer to the chest. And then as you exhale, sit down the hip, bringing them down. This might be your malasana. You also might have the heels lifted, depending on the flexibility and the mobility of the ankles. Arms are pressing inside the thighs. Spine is tall, lifting out through the chest. Shoulders are relaxed. Down to the sky. Take a moment here. This is a posture that really does Freedom to the lower back and the hips. And then release the arms forward and use the strength of the core to bring the seat to the earth. 
wonderful. Bring the legs directly out in front of you, keeping them active. The tall spine will come into a forward fold. When you push, you know, the feet are flexed. And imagine you're pushing the big toe away from you and the little toe side of the foot is coming towards you. This really helps keep the leg engaged. We lengthen out the spine. The fold, we want it to come from the hip creeks. Tall spine and then coming forward from here as far as you can to keep the spine straight. So you may not come very far. You may only move a few degrees and that's fine. Breathing here. And when you reach the end of your range of motion, you can start to drag the body forward. Hands can come wherever you want. You can even place the thumbs on the base of the big toes, holding the outside of the feet. And breathing here. Five long breaths. In this posture, Deep. Maybe surrendering a little bit more with every exhale. Then on an inhale, lengthen the spine long again and come back up to seated. Wonderful. We'll take the left leg and place the left heel directly in the groin, with the toes pressing into the right of the thigh. Facing forward, if your left leg is hovering, you can always put a block underneath to give it a bit of support. Lengthen out of the spine, and again, fold forward from the hip. Imagine you're actually folding forward over both legs. Again, keep the spine as long as possible. But if we reach the end of the range of motion, then we start to bend. Long breaths. Keeping the right leg active, but flexed. Noticing stiffness or tension. We can feel really trapped in our bodies with the amount of stress and tension that we hold. When we go down, we mind and pay attention to these spots. It can really help us bring a sense of relief. Getting into those connective tissues. And if the body is okay, just relax and let go. Often tension is a mental bracing that we do within the body. And on an inhale, slowly come back up. Release the left leg long. Maybe shake it out a little bit with the hips. And then side B, bring in the right leg in, tall side, and then the right meter flop open. Right heel into the groin, right toes pressing into the inside of the left leg. Again, full spine, and as you exhale, folding for the crease, keeping the left foot flexed, and bending down. You notice a difference in both sides. That is completely normal. We often favor one side. We have these habitual patterns and movements in the body. This is another reason it's so great to cultivate a yoga practice. When we work on these asymmetrical poses, it really brings awareness to what we do with our bodies on a daily basis. We can start to maybe change our patterns of behavior to help bring a little bit more balance into the body. And on an inhale, we'll st start to come up slowly. Bring this leg back in. Shake it in the hip side. We'll move into a diamond pose. So at the start, we did Dukta Baddha Konasana, recline butterfly. And this is another version of it, but the feet are much further away from the groin. So we're going to put in the heels together. We're pointing the foot a bit like a Barbie foot. Nest with in the ankles, making sure that the movement 
be coming from hips, not the collapse of the ankles. Tall spine, and again, holding from this hip crease. Imagine your pelvis is rotating around the heads of the femur bone when you come forward. So you may feel this in a different part of the leg when you're in You can really feel it here. Lengthen in the spine, and then when you're ready, you can curl forward. If it's in your body, your head may actually come to your feet. You may feel the sensation of hair on your feet, which is something we often don't experience once we leave childhood. Maybe if your memory about freedom was from your childhood, you can again tune into the sensations that you felt in the body when you revisited it. And then when you're ready, we'll slowly come back up. Maybe use the hands to bring these knees in. These are pointing up to the sky. Arms come out in front and we'll descend one vertebra at a time back down to the earth. When you get there, bring the feet as wide as the mat and allow the knees to come together to reset the psoas. It feels so good, this posture. Take a moment just to breathe. And we will move into bridge pose. Bringing the feet directly underneath the knees is quite hard to see doing it on your own. We want the knees underneath the heels underneath the knees even to provide a big, a good stable pace for our bridge. The upper back is wide, the arms are planted on the earth next to the body with the palms facing down, grounding into the feet, getting a good connection with the earth. And on the inhale, lifting the pelvis, raising the hips one vertebra at a time, hip bones to the sky. Imagine the tailbone is long and pointed towards the back of the knees. Right here. Bridge pose is often called of forgiveness. You imagine your body is the bridge and there's a creek running underneath you. Maybe there is something that you can forgive in your life, be a person, a thing, a situation, it can even be yourself. When we forgive and we let go of something that we've been holding on to, maybe a perceived Grievance, it can also help us freedom into our lives. Often the change we have are mental. So if there's something you let go of, maybe you can imagine it falling off of your bridge into that creek and allowing the water to keep it away. One more breath here. And then as you exhale, release the spine one vertebra at a time, starting at the top. The sacrum is the last thing to come down. Pause here for the moment and bring the knees into the chest, giving yourself a little squeeze. Bring the feet down to the earth. Lift the hips up and place them slightly to the right of the mat. The knees come back up to the tabletop. We'll move into these eagle legs again, Garudasana, crossing the right leg over the left, maybe a double wrap, arms on the cactus. Gently allow the knees to fall over to the left side. Lift the head off the earth, turn it mid-air, and look over the right shoulder if that feels good. And then the eagle twist. You may feel this a little bit more in the hips. This is a great twist to do. Just tuning in to where you're feeling any tension, sending the breath there, telling the body it's open and let go. You don't need to hold on to anything. A yoga mat, 
country and a place where we were safe and secure. And inhale, bring the knees back up, unravel the legs, return the feet to the earth, and we'll lift the hips slightly over the left this time. Knees come up to tabletop, crossing the left knee over the right, maybe a double wrap, then allowing the knees to fall over to the right, lifting the head, turning it midair, looking over the shoulder, breathing deep here. Again, telling the body, you can let go. You don't need to hold on. You don't need to brace and protect me. You are free to just let it go. Then on an inhale, bring the knees back up to the center line, unravel, reset the hips back to the middle of the mat. Bring the knees in one by one into the chest, giving yourself a little squeeze. And then when you're ready, release the legs one by one out into the mat. Coming into a final relaxation, with the feet popping open. Allow the palms to face up to the sky with the fingers against the curling. Shoulders are snuggled down the back. Back of the neck is long with the chin slightly tucked. Eyes are closed. And turn your attention inwards. Begin to let go and allow yourself to surrender into the earth. While you're laying here, I have a poem to read for you, which I thought was appropriate for today. It's one of my favorite poems. And it's called The Horses by Tim Hughes. The Horses. I climbed through the woods in the hour before dawn dark evil air, frost-making stillness, a leaf of the bird, a world half in frost. I came out above the wood where my breath left torches statues in the eyesight. But the valleys were draining in the darkness to the moorland, blackening in dregs with the brightening grey halved the sky ahead. And I saw the horses huge in the dense gray, ten together, megalith still. We breathe, making no move, with draped manes and dotted hind hooves, making no sound. I passed. Not one snorted or jerked its head. Gray silent fragments of a gray silent world. I listened in emptiness on the moorage. The curlew's tear turned its edge on the silence. Slowly, detail leafed from the darkness. Then the sun, orange, red, red erupted silently and splitting to its core, core and flung cloud, shook the gulf open, showed blue and the big planets hanging. I turned, stumbling in the fever of a dream, down towards the dark woods from the kindling tops, and came to the horses. There still they stood, but now steaming and glistening under the flow of light. Their great stone manes, their tilted, Hind hooves stirring under a thaw while all around them the frost showed its fires. But still they made no sound. Not one snorted or stamped. Their hung heads patient as the horizons. 
high are the valleys in the leveling red rays? In the crowded streets, going among the years and the faces, may I still meet my memory in so lonely a place. Between the stream and the red clouds, hearing curlews, hearing the horizons endure. Start to bring your awareness to the furthest away sound that you can hear. And then the closest sound you can hear. And before you start to move the body, maybe again connect with that sense of freedom that you record and how it feels in your body. In your senses. See if this is something that you can take with you for the rest of today. Now start to move the feet and toes. Feels good. You can do a full body stretch. Arms overhead and the feet in the opposite direction. Total elongation of all your limbs and your spine. And then one by one, let me bring the knees into the chest. Maybe giving yourself a gentle rock on the sacrum. This rocking movement in the body is really soothing to us. And then when you're ready, it will good for you. Roll over gently onto your favorite side, coming into a fetal position. Pause here for a moment. And with the eyes, and gently push yourself up to a comfortable seat. When you arrive in your seat, place the palms on the knees facing upwards towards the sky. This is a symbol of inspiration, a symbol to receive, a symbol to show that we are open to change. And maybe one of those changes is, is bringing a little bit more freedom into one aspect of your life. Take a deep inhale and then exhale through the mouth. Bring the palms together at the chest. And then raise the palms to the third eye. For freedom of thought. The lip. For freedom of speech. And back to the heart. For freedom in your soul. I thank you for joining me today and practicing. Uh, and being open to maybe a few changes in your life. Thank you, and I hope to practice again with you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day.
So I hope you enjoyed that class and you feel a little bit more free in your body. This is to celebrate the radical freedom that I took part in and my chapter was my own paradise. It was inspired by my move here to Costa Rica. I reflected on my career in the police and how I felt trapped by the amount of stress that I had. Uh, if you get it, you'll see that I give a few tips on how you can deal with stress in your life because it can have a vice like work on us and it is one of the things that makes us feel caged and desiring freedom. <laughs> so I will close the class now and thank you for tuning in and practicing with me. I truly appreciate everybody that does and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.